this is Chaturshi and welcome to our class on machine learning today we are going to discuss an important topic called as model evaluation so essentially in last few classes we have tried to understand what is machine learning and what are the different tasks for which we build models so we understood that model is one of the output of this machine learning framework now how do we identify or how do we understand whether the model is performing well or not so that is one point and before uh, directly diving there we would also try to understand that what should be objective of a model okay so essentially uh, a model can have two objectives the first objective is prediction so the prediction can be either uh, you know a classification category or can be a uh, regression forecasting uh, where essentially we want to find out that how accurate we are right so how close is our prediction with the actuals okay so that is one of the objectives another objective is inference so there we try to understand that all right if uh, this is happening or or uh, this is uh, going to be the value of uh, this variable then what are the main fa factors so if if sales is going up then what are the factors that are actually driving sales up okay so you try to infer and and this inference can also lead you to take some actions okay so it cannot be you know watertight that some models will only do prediction and some models will only do inference probably it is best when both of these are merged okay now let's see that how do we evaluate models so basically simplest way to evaluate a classifier is you check that where uh, your prediction is not equal to actual okay so y i actually indicates the actual value and y i hat indicates what you have predicted okay and this i actually uh, gives a value 1 if y i and y hat is not matching and takes a value 0 if they are matching so essentially you want to minimize this okay and basically you measure the performance using a matrix called as confusion matrix so this is one of the very important tools uh, to measure the performance of a classifier so what here you try to simply do is you try to find out that so you assume that there are two classes positive and negative okay and you try to find out that how many cases uh, you find the prediction is positive and actually the class was also positive okay so predicted class is positive and the actual is also positive right so you call that as true positive again when uh, you are predicting as negative and the actual class is positive you call it as a false negative so you can follow the similar terminology so when actual class is negative and uh, the predicted class is also negative then it is a true negative and when you have predicted as positive but the actual class is negative then it's called as a false positive so for those who are well conversant then it is very trivial for those who are listening to it for the first time the terminology may be a little bit difficult okay so what i will uh, you know try to tell you is that this second term so you know look at the quadrants okay the quadrants are described using two words so actually the second word uh, corresponds to the prediction okay so you see that the column is positive so both cases uh, the second word is positive okay and essentially what you are telling is that you predicted it as positive class but however uh, it is false in this case and true in this case so that's how you can remember this okay now let us try to understand this with an example so let us say you are trying to uh, uh, detect whether a patient has get, got cancer or not so from the medical test terminology so if you have a cancer then you say that the test result is positive right so um, 
basically when you say true positive that means the patient has cancer and you predicted it as cancer okay and similar terminologies you can understand false positive would be the model predicted as ca cancer but do not have cancer false negative is the model has predicted as no cancer but the patient actually has ca cancer and true negative is the model predicted as not cancer and it is correct okay and you can understand that what do you want what should be the ideal behavior of the classifier so you want most of the quantities to be accumulated in the principal diagonal so you want the true positive and true negative to be maximized okay so uh, the most baseline way to evaluate a classifier is using a classification accuracy measure where you actually have true positive and true negative in the numerator and uh, all other observation in the denominator okay so uh, this is how you used to evaluate a classifier now here is one associated problem that in some cases this may not give you very good results so let me give you an example so let us take the case of fraud detection all right and let us say i have uh, i have asked you to build a model and you have come back to me and reported that Satashi, my classifier is giving a 99.9% .9 accuracy. And I do not seem to be very happy. What may be the reason? No, the reason is not that, you know, we are very focused on accuracy. But the reason is that this is a problem where the classes are not equally distributed, which is more popularly called as imbalanced class. So you may be knowing that the fraud rates will be well below, uh, you know, 0.01% or something like that. So basically, maybe out of 10,000 cases, 5 cases or 10 cases are actually fraud. And if you have not built any model, your model just tells that whatever comes, I will tell that this is as normal. Okay. So then what will happen? That in all that 99,000 uh, 9, or 9,990 times, your prediction will be correct. Because only 10 times will go wrong where actually they were fraud. So your accuracy will be 99.9%. .9%. So that's the reason accuracy may not be the best measure to find this out okay and there are also another angle that i want to consider you uh, want you to consider closely so what is that that see false positive and false negatives are basically misclassifications and whenever there is a misclassification there is a cost associated with it now the question is that are the cost of false positive and false negative to, to be treated equally like we have done here? So this is an important question to consider. So not in all cases, they will have equal weightage. Okay. So let me give you an example. Okay. So let's say we are dealing with the problem of spam email. And uh, there is a email from your boss which says that, you know, you uh, come and meet me immediately. There is something urgent uh, to report or something like that. And that goes to spam. Okay. So if I consider the spam class as the positive class, so you predicted that to be spam and actually it was not a spam. So it was a false positive. All right. So you can understand the repercussion okay some important mail you may have missed that may be regarding your airlines reservation hotel reservation something very very important job interview call and whereas false negative is that actually it was a spam and you could not identify it as a spam so it has come in your normal email box so what will happen probably will be a little bit irritated that's all and you will manually mark it as a spam or something right so the costs are drastically different okay 
so let me uh, give you another example okay so the another example may be that uh, you are you have surveillance cameras in the airport and you are trying to identify uh, passengers as as a security threat or not so security threat is a positive class and not security threat is the negative class now when uh, it is false positive that means that uh, you have predicted someone to be security threat but he is not a security threat so what will happen so he will be he will be irritated frustrated and then he will go right but what about false negative that actually he was a security threat but you could not identify him you can think of the repercussion the entire airport can be blown off right okay so that's the reason you know you you cannot really always treat false positive and false negative similarly all right so here are some more measures of uh, of classification performance so one is called as precision precision is like how accurate you are in predicting the positive classes so this true positive and false positive are the ones that you have predicted it positive and how many of them were actually accurate so this is like the classification accuracy for the positive class what is the recall a recall is that how many so you if you look in context to your uh, confusion matrix you will see that true positive and false negative are the actual positive classes so out of the actual positive classes how many you could find out and it turns out that of course you want a system which has high precision and high recall but it turns out that always it is not easy to maximize both of them so what is done is you take an average of them okay and mind you that average can be found out by uh, arithmetic mean geometric mean and harmonic mean and which is the most conservative one or which gives the lowest value uh, actually the lowest value is given by the harmonic mean and f1 score is actually harmonic mean of precision and recall so that there is another terminology which is used which is called as specificity so specificity is actually uh, the you can think of it like accuracy of the negative class so basically how many uh, classes were actually negative and how many of them you could identify uh, negative correctly and recall also has a name called as sensitivity okay so these typically covers all the performance measures that are there for evaluating a classifier in next class we will discuss how to evaluate the performance of a regressor as well as a clustering algorithm